Patrick O'Connell, or Don Patricio as he was known in Spain, uh, was one of the most interesting characters in European soccer history. He was captain of Manchester United, manager of FC Barcelona during the Spanish Civil War. And in, in his private life, he was a bigamist. He had wives uh, in England and one in Spain. Both were Irish women, um, neither of whom knew about each other. He was born in, in 1887 and uh, came to prominence uh, as a professional footballer with clubs like Hull City, Sheffield Wednesday and Man United. As captain of the Ireland uh, soccer team, he was uh, the only captain to lead an All-Ireland team to the home international championships in 1914. He played the third game of that series against Scotland with the broken arm. Um, the following year, 1915, he was involved in the biggest uh, football scandal to British football in the first half of the 20th century. He, uh, several players from uh, Manchester United and Liverpool met a few days before they were due to play in a league game uh, on Good Friday, uh, April 1915, in a pub and arranged to fix the match at a 2-0 scoreline and place bets at 7-8-1 and eight to one around the country on the score. When the match was played, Man United were 1-0 up uh, in the second half when they were awarded a penalty. George Anderson, the regular penalty taker, uh, stood aside to let O'Connell take the penalty and uh, he blazed it, uh, according to the Manchester Guardian, uh, some yards wide. Um, the, the fans in the stadium, there was 15,000 at Old Trafford that day, were uh, going crazy. Um, play up, you rotters, they kept uh, shouting at the players. The referee, after this penalty, um, spoke with his linesmen and considered calling off the match, but they, they played on till the end. The Manchester United uh, manager had left the stadium before the final whistle, he was so disgusted. An inquiry by the English FA, um, which uh, came out with a report in December of that year, um, banned seven of the players uh, from both teams, um, although O'Connell himself escaped censure because of a lack of evidence. After the war, his uh, playing career uh, um, petered out with Ashington AFC in the north of England and in 1922 he travelled to, Eng uh, to Spain uh, to take up management of Racing Santander, leaving a wife and his four children back in Manchester. Um, he had great success in, in Spain as a manager, managed several clubs uh, including uh, Real Betis who he led to league championship in 1935, their only title win in the club's history. It was an improbable victory. The, the club at the time were only uh, uh, receiving about 1,500 fans at, at home games. After Real Batiste won the league title in 1935, um, Barcelona made a swoop for uh, O'Connell. He agreed uh, to join the club uh, after hearing their proposal and uh, headed north to the Catalan city. Um, at the time the club had had a few barren years um, but straight away O'Connell won the Catalan Championship which is a big deal um, before the war. He also got the club to the final of the Spanish Cup against their eternal rivals Real Madrid although uh, they lost 2-1, a, a late save by the famous Spanish goalkeeper Ricardo Zamora denying, denying them a, an equaliser. Um, that summer he headed back to Ireland uh, for holidays and it was there in July um, 1936 that he found out that uh, Spain had uh, uh, descended into civil war. A couple of weeks later he received a letter from the directors of um, Barca uh, telling him that they understood uh, his predicament and that they were releasing him from his contract. Um, also uh, a few days uh, before O'Connell received this letter Joseph Sonyal, the president of Barca who had signed O'Connell the year beforehand was shot and murdered in the mountains outside Madrid um, by the f by the fascists. He um, Sonyal was a, a firebrand, a Catalan separatist politician, and uh, uh, a hero to FC Barcelona. Despite these uh, circumstances, O'Connell uh, agreed to honour his commitment to the club and headed back to Barcelona, a war torn torn city at the time. Uh, the Spanish league uh, had become suspended. Uh, Barca were reduced to playing uh, exhibition matches as fundraisers for the soldiers uh, in Catalonia. 
and even by 1937 most of the, the clubs in Spain had been taken over including uh, O'Connell's three former clubs Real Oviedo, Racing Santander and Real Betis. Um, Barca, part of the club, had been bombed and uh, they were facing extinction uh, with, no, with no revenue coming in but uh, bread landed from heaven when uh, a Mexican former basketball player turned entrepreneur um, approached the club uh, asking them if they would come on an exhibition tour to Mexico and the United States. Uh, he agreed to cover their costs and said he'd pay them $15,000 uh, to boot. Um, O'Connell set off for Mexico by boat with 16 players and they arrived in the country during uh, rainy season so they had to play all their games in the morning which left them free to relax for the rest of the day. Not that they had to play too many matches, they played six in total um, before, uh, four of which they won. Um, after two months in Mexico uh, they moseyed up to New York and played a few more matches there and after four months uh, they had to head back to, uh, to Spain. Of the 16 players in the group only four returned to Spain, the rest chose to head to France and uh, back to Mexico and stay there in exile including one player who uh, went on to marry uh, the niece of uh, the president of Mexico. Uh, O'Connell himself uh, headed back to Barcelona City. Uh, uh, on, on his way he deposited the money they had made from the tour in a Swiss bank account, so it was free from the clutches of, of Franco. Um, uh, by the time the Civil War had, had finished, he had left Barcelona City and Barca, but the money he, he gathered together on that promotional tour helped to uh, restart the club after the war. Um, he managed a few other clubs uh, later in his uh, time in Spain, but ultimately died uh, destitute in London in 1959. Um, there's a bust of him in, in the club at Barcelona uh, Museum, and it's remarkable to think that a boy from uh, working class streets here in, in Drumconda, a few hundred yards from uh, Croke Park, uh, helped to save the most illustrious club in the world from extinction. He genuinely deserves the aristocratic moniker Don Patricio.